Hi there, welcome back. We're going to return to learning right now. I just want to make sure we all have the same foundation. This is a definition that we're working with, a relatively permanent change in behavior that occurs through experience. In another lecture, I identified how important the word relatively permanent is because that's something that can shift and change pretty frequently. I also identified the significance of animal research. The significance of animal research has really been borne out in this operant conditioning, specifically with the work of Thorndike and B.F. Skinner. Thorndike proposed this law of effect, and the law of effect states that consequences strengthen or weaken behavior, which he believed that the outcome of an individual's behavior will predict the likelihood of an individual participating in that behavior again. B.F. Skinner, a follower of Thorndike's Law of Effect, picked up the ball and started to work a little bit further, and he was one of the first people to really start to work with animals in this respect. He believed in two primary tenets. One, that all learning mechanisms were the same for all species, and that the theories and the insights that he could gain from working with mice, rats, pigeons, and cats, he could actually apply to humans. The other thing that he really believed in was that behavior was controlled by environmental forces. And so he used those two primary tenets in order to create situations and circumstances where he trained animals, mice, rats, pigeons, and cats, to do very specific behaviors, very intricate behaviors in some instances. Now, from the theory of operant conditioning, we have two sub-theories, the theory of reinforcement and the theory of punishment. Reinforcement is anything that will increase the likelihood of behavior. So if an individual participates in a behavior and it's they have a positive outcome, they are more likely to produce that behavior again in the future. What we see is that there is an example of positive reinforcement. This is where behavior is followed by a rewarding consequence. And in this instance, something is added to the environment that the individual actually likes. We also have negative reinforcement. This is when behavior is also followed by a rewarding consequence. But in this instance, something that was negative or adverse or unpleasant was actually removed from the environment. So positive reinforcement would be getting paid for grades. Negative reinforcement would be um, having something negative taken away. So let's say you're on academic probation, you keep your grades up, and the university reinforces you having positive grades by taking away your academic probation. In both examples, both positive and negative reinforcement, we are increasing the likelihood of that behavior happening again. For positive reinforcement, something has been added, and for negative reinforcement, something has been removed. Now on to punishment. Punishment results in a decrease in behavior. We identify a punishment by a change in behavior and the likelihood that that behavior is not repeated. Positive punishment is when the behavior is followed by an adverse consequence. This is something that is uncomfortable or unpleasant. The stimulus is added to the environment. In the example that we were using earlier, let's say an individual performs poorly academically and then they are placed on academic probation. This is a negative stimulus that is added to the environment. In many ways, we also think of capital punishment of children, like when a child gets a spanking for having produced a behavior that is not appropriate, they are given um, basically a punishment through being spanked. Negative punishment is a behavior followed by an adverse consequence, but in this instance, something that is nice is taken away. Something that we find rewarding is actually removed. For example, uh, one of the consequences that we had in my household when I was growing up is that if you did not meet curfew, you were not allowed to use a vehicle for a certain period of time. I don't remember if it was, you know, one day for every 15 minutes that you were late. Um, but there was some sort of balance like that. My behavior was followed by an adverse consequence. Something rewarding, like having a vehicle at my disposal, was actually removed and I was no longer granted access to that. I have posted, um, again, what I think is a fun and interesting video. This one is actually taken from the Big Bang Theory that demonstrates this phenomenon of operant conditioning. Before I let you go right now, I want to make sure that you, one, know that I like chocolate, and you'll understand that reference when you uh, go in and watch the video. But I also want to make sure that there are a few key points about punishment that I want you to be aware of. One is that punished behavior is suppressed. It's not forgotten. And so what we see, not only theoretically but practically, is that when an individual is punished, it actually doesn't create a change in behavior because that behavior still exists. It's just being suppressed. The other thing is that punishment 
punishment can teach fear. Because you are adding an adverse consequence or something that is negative, or you're removing something positive, it teaches the individual to be afraid of losing that nice thing or incurring that negative thing for your punishment. The other issue that we have with punishment theoretically and also empirically throughout the literature is that physical punishment actually increases aggression by modeling aggression as a way to cope with problems. When a parent out of frustration, anger, or anxiety gets physical with their child, it tells their child that this is how we do, how we deal with um, our emotions when we are frustrous, frustrated, angry, or fearful. One of the quotes that I really like, uh, that I believe is from our textbook, is that punishment tells you what not to do, reinforcement tells you what to do. And what we see throughout, specifically the parenting research, is that it's really valuable to let them know what they're doing right and less valuable to let them know what they're doing wrong. That's not to say that you can't point out a mistake here and there, but be aware of what punishment is and how it might actually influence the individual. Well, until next time.